These two Iowa lawmakers are among 41 legislators from across the country last September who demanded audits of every state's election from 2020. They allege corruption despite what the courts have said so far. Now these 41 lawmakers, they're the minority because after all, there are 7,383 state lawmakers in the entire country. So this small minority is calling for what they consider a forensic audit of the vote here. Iowa's Republican Secretary of State has repeatedly said that there was not fraud that impacted the 2020 election, and he's not exactly sure what these people want him to do. I've yet to really see a hard definition of that, but I can tell you I do get how people always have their concerns about, you know, what are you doing? We've got to work really hard at transparency. I think we do a good job in Iowa. I think most people, you ask them, they'll say we did it right, and we had record numbers of, of voting. We do an audit. We do one in all 99 counties, and the last three audits we've done, 100% compliance. And, and say what that is. Go through that process. We, we, my office randomly selects one voting precinct in each county. These counties don't know which one it's going to be, and they have to go through and hand count those ballots and compare it to what the tabulator may have showed or reported. And there were 100% matchup from the school board and city elections we just did to the last presidentials we did. They came out 100% match. So would we be better served if that were done on every single vote in every single election? Well, I think it would also cause a problem for those of you who want to know the election results at nine o'clock. Because if you're gonna hand count them, it will take a long time. And all- Weeks, how long would it take? At least weeks. And, and in all fairness, human counting isn't always the best either. When we did the, uh, the recounts, if you remember in the congressional race where it was six vote difference, uh, it took several times as they counted it because there was some human error going on. And the tabulators were right in all those cases. So we, we, we're trying to get the best of both worlds here. We're having the tabulators do the heavy lift, but we do a audit, if you will, and a forensics count of targeted precincts to make sure they're all accurate. Also, the tabulators are all pre-tested with the public watching, and uh, those, are, those are important steps. We have a lot of checks and balances in our process here. It, has anything changed since that second congressional district race here? There were issues about you know, ballots that got mm -hmm. wet or machines that weren't sure. uniform in each place. Is there a uniform way, or can this happen the next go around well, too? Well, we have a pretty good system out there. I think it worked well. Uh, my office is offering up some improvements. We always do that after every election. We look for ways we can do a better job. So we will have some recommendations to the legislature this year to help improve the recount process, to make it a little more consistent. Uh, but I think it worked very well when we did it. Uh, and we're looking towards the future, and I think we can improve on it, of course. Uh, looking at the previous changes that have happened here, one in particular where we used to be able to get our, as long as we had our ballot stamped, mm -hmm by election day, we were fine, even right. though it didn't have to be received. Now, now it has to be received. So we're, you know, we're hearing at least some cases of mail came in later, so your ballot mm -hmm. didn't count. How many people were excluded from the process like that? I'm not sure what the exact number is. I, I, I understand how people could be concerned about that. I think what the legislature was doing was trying to respond to the fact that people felt that the longer the process took, there was potentially more shenanigans that can happen and it created doubt in their minds. So they were looking for a hard, solid time. And to them, election day was that date and that time. And that's what the direction they have taken. It does mean my job and my county auditor counterparts need to do even more to educate the public so they know the deadlines there. You know, they can still mail it in and if that's what they're choosing to do, or they can take advantage of satellite voting or going to vote at the courthouse. But uh, we do have to remind the public of what the deadlines are so they can be successful. That's our job, and we have to work harder at it. What is, what is there left for you to do as the elections chief here mm -hmm. to allow people to feel like this is fair, it's on the up and up? When you have, while it might be a small chunk of people, right. still thinking 2020 was, was crooked, despite the evidence to prove that. Uh, what, what can you do here? Well, we've got to continue to do shows like this. We have to reach out, build a choir. Uh, we've got to show the people what we're doing so they have a full knowledge of it. And we ask them to go to trusted sources. Uh, sadly, that sometimes this information they're getting is not accurate. Uh, social media is not you know, the gospel. 
Uh, you do need to know where they're getting that information from. But to you make know sure there are right. some in your party that say don't trust the media, though. <laughs> Understandable. So what are we supposed to do well, about that? Well, and, and you know, and part of it is what I have to do and my counterparts. We have to continue to go out into the public and give them the facts. Uh, can we change everyone's mind? No, I don't think we could. But as long as I keep bringing the facts to them, I've got a lot of confidence in people to be sharp enough to kind of see through it, and the majority of them will get it, and hopefully the rest will come along at appropriate times. He's focused on another matter besides the elections. Find out about that next. <music>